All right, so we'll go through, and what I want to do is do a bunch of Panam charts for uh, cases. So we'll talk through them. So I want you to make a chart that says fair, not fair, a line down the middle, and then P, N, A, M. And we can make little check boxes in them. That's kind of what I want to do. So our first example is Billy Graham Archives versus Dorling Kindersley. Um, Billy Graham made artwork for the Grateful Dead. Uh, he did you know posters and concert tickets, and um, you know the Grateful Dead. The illustrated trip was like a 500-page history of the Grateful Dead book, in which they used a few of Billy Graham's uh, posters and a few of his ticket designs um, to basically as part of telling the history of the Grateful Dead. And I actually hear that if you rip. Um, a little piece of paper out of page 378, it's actually an acid tab. It's a joke, but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, anyways, uh, so what ended up happening was Billy, Graham, Billy Graham's archives, which is his family, sued because they're like, yo, you used our work without permission. And Dorling Kindersley was like, that's cool. Our use is fair. We didn't like have full page images of your work. We didn't like reproduce posters or anything like that. We used them in timelines. They were reduced thumbnail sizes just to show, you know, the history of, of the group. And they ended up going to court over it. Okay, so if we look at is this a fair use? Well, are they simply, is Dorley Kindersley, are they simply exploiting Billy Graham's work? Or are they adding value to it? Are they adding meaning by using it? Uh, you know, is it they're creating some form of public enrichment? You know, or are they exploiting Billy Graham? And the answer is the use would be fair here because they're not exploiting them. It's very transformative. It's a book, you know, and it's to tell the history of the Grateful Dead, right? And what's the purpose of the original was to sell concert tickets or actual concert tickets. So a marketing purpose versus a book, a historical book, okay? And that's very important. They did not exploit the originals. So that has partly to do with the size of them, how they were used, and the context in which they were used. If we look at the nature of the original, Clearly, you know, these are creative works, right? It would be unfair. We look at amount used, and again, these were the entire works. So, it was a, you know, the entire poster, but a small image of it, not a large full page spread or anything like that. So, it would likely be unfair in that sense, okay? Right, because of all this, because it was so transformative, because they used the images for uh, historical, not you know, creative value, right? This was a very transformative market, right? Now the consumers are probably the same; they're fans of the Grateful Dead, you know. Um, but it didn't matter. It was a book market; it was not a concert market. So, because it was so transformative in purpose, it ultimately transformed the market. And yes, it is a fair use. All right. So here we are on to Los Angeles News Service versus KCAL TV Channel 9. Okay, this is covering, uh, this is a clip, pretty brutal clip, uh, part of a four minute clip um, that was aired on KCA, KCAL uh, during the 1992 uh, Los Angeles riots. Um, this is of a, a truck driver, Reginald Denny, being pulled out of his truck and being beaten in, in uh, I believe it was in Watts, and um, <clears throat> it became iconic footage, you know, during, uh, during the riots, and uh, Los Angeles News Service is, a, is kind of like a stinger, so if you can think of um, the Jake uh, Gyllenhaal movie, what is it, uh, Nightcrawler, right, where he, he goes to, like, news events and then whatever and takes images early, that's kind of what uh, Los Angeles News Service was, is they try to capture content that's newsworthy and sell it to the news uh, news news stations and um, they had this helicopter footage and of this like I don't know about four minute footage the the first 30 seconds is of this of this pretty graphic beat down uh, and robbing of Reginald Denny and what ended up happening is they sold the content the footage to other um, you know news 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 companies because that's that was their business. Los Angeles News Service just used it. 
they just ran it. They, they, they claimed their use was fair, that it was for news purposes. But let's think a little bit about this. So if we panam this, purpose. What do we think for purpose here? Okay, hmm. What's the purpose of the original work, right? It's like, it's exactly the same. It's totally exploitative, right? They're not commenting on it. They're not building upon it. They're using it because it's graphic, visually stimulating news material. They're not adding anything to it. It's simply exploitative. So under purpose, we'd have not fair. Uh, nature of the original. Is this creative content? Hell no. Now you may say, yeah, they're flying in a helicopter, but it's, it's, it's non-fiction. So likely um, the use would be fair here because it, it, they're using uh, non-fictional work that didn't require a lot of creativity to make it. Now let's look at amount used. Hmm. Now they, they use 30 seconds of four minutes, right? That's not that much. That's one eighth of the content. But what part did they use? They used the most important part. They used the heart of the work, the, the, the main joint. You know what I'm saying? And therefore, in that factor, it would be not fair. Which brings us lastly to market. Does this create market harm for Los Angeles News Service? And the answer is fuck yeah, it does. Their whole market is licensing and selling news footage to news companies and this news company this news station you know just took their footage and used it totally not a fair use in that category and therefore not a fair use in general at all in this case okay check this image it's uh, annie Leibowitz versus paramount pictures this is from 1998 this is, uh, you know, Paramount had a movie, uh, Naked Gun, 33 and a third, part of the Naked Gun franchise, I guess, um, that mocked and mimicked a very iconic image of a pregnant Demi Moore that was on the cover of the Vanity Fair. Um, when they did this promotional image, uh, you know, Vanity Fair did not sue. It's likely, I, I doubt Vanity Fair owned the image. Maybe Annie did. Uh, Leibowitz uh, sued. Um, for this work. Now, what did Paramount claim? Fair use. So when they ended up in court, uh, we have to ask these questions, right? Let's, let's panam this, right? Um, purpose, right? Well, what's the purpose of original? It's a magazine color, cover celebrating beauty, you know, pre, uh, you know, um, of a, of a pregnant woman of life, etc., etc. Of femininity and then we have something that mocks that that makes fun of that um, so purpose would be totally a fair use it's directly mocking the original nature of the original this photograph is very creative how, how uh, Demi Moore is staged lit and then all the after processing uh, in Photoshop or whatever makes this a clearly creative work and therefore the use would be not fair on Paramount's behalf now, the important thing when we look at amount used is this. Um, Paramount mimicked Leibowitz's style. They didn't actually, like, take the image and put um, uh, 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 Leslie Nielsen's head on it, right? Uh, they actually just took their own photograph and then put his head, he put, put his head on the body. Um, but if we look at amount used, again... They use the heart of the work, uh, you know, like it doesn't matter if that's Demi Moore or not. Like they use a very important part, even though they don't actually verbatim directly sample here. Okay, which brings us down to, you know, some of the artistic differences, um, which, you know, leads us to market, right? Would this create consumer confusion? Would it replace the original in the marketplace, right? And the answer is hell no. <laughs> like there's no way that someone would be like, wow. You know, Demi's really, you know, struggling in the last few months months of pregnancy, you know, like, you know, no one would think that's her. No one would think that's the original. Like, it's clearly very different art artistic differences that, that make the use fair, specifically under market. No one would be consumed, uh, confused. I mean, people are dumb, but they ain't that dumb, okay? So, therefore, this is a fair use. Let's look at this case here, which is uh, Castle Rock Entertainment versus Carol. 
Now, this is a trivia book based on the show Seinfeld, a show about nothing. Maybe some of y'all have seen it or heard, or heard of it, okay? Um, basically, this was a Seinfeld trivia book that had events, characters, base, parts of storylines, etc. in it. Um, and uh, Castle Rock owns the copyright on Seinfeld. So Jerry Seinfeld, Larry David did not own the copyright on it. It was owned by um, uh, Castle Rock. And anyways, Carol put out this book um, that was a Seinfeld trivia book. And uh, basically, you know, Castle Rock sued. They're like, hell no, like, no. And, um, you know, uh, Carol Publishing said, cool, whatever, it's a fair use. Now, the question became this. Is what happens in a TV show, a fictional TV show about nothing, is, is what happens in a TV show about nothing, okay, is it a fact or a protectable expression? So are the storylines, character names, things that happen in Seinfeld, are they facts? Right? Did they happen or are they protectable expressions? Okay, now let's look at a, a let's panam it, right? Purpose. Did, does a trivia book add upon or add value to an original work of art or does it simply exploit it? In this case, it's clearly exploitative. The trivia book is exploiting the storylines, characters, the creativity of Seinfeld. Therefore, not fair under purpose. The nature of the original. Seinfeld is a work of creative fiction. Therefore, the use would be not fair. Amount used. They only probably used little bits, but they probably used a lot of important bits. We could say it's fair, it's not fair, it's somewhere in the middle, um, you know, but it, it's hard to kind of tell there, so that may be a gray area for us. Lastly, market harm. Does this create market harm? Well, clearly, because the use is not transformative, because it doesn't transform the original enough, it simply exploits it. And if you are a copyright owner, you have the right to prepare derivatives. A trivia book would be a derivative. The same happened for Harry Potter. Um, don't, don't mess with Harry Potter. You'll, you'll, you'll catch a bad one. Um, and I think this is, really, this is really important, right? This didn't add anything new. It simply exploited the original. Therefore, it infringed on the marketplace or the market right for... Um, Castle Rock to prepare derivatives. So basically the significance of this, um, you know, is that it was not a fair use and that, you know, copyright owners are allowed to, um, you know, license the right for people to make trivia books based on its content. You can make trivia books based on facts, on history, on things that happen in the world, uh, like Trivial Pursuit, that's all fine, but if you do a book or a piece of work that's strictly specifically on another piece of work, creative work, like a show or a movie or a video game or whatever it is, you know, that could likely be not a fair use. The last example is The Cat Not in the Hat, a parody by Dr. Juice, okay? This was a, a, a book that, um, you know, tried to uh tell retell the oj simpson trial using the style of dr seuss and and you know the writing style and visual style of dr seuss dr seuss state who's super litigious seuss all right um penguin books claims fair use now it goes to court and the court well if we panam it right this is clearly a satire it's not making fun of dr seuss and the cat in the hat it's using it for satirical effect, okay? So therefore, in purpose, it is not transformative. It's simply exploiting Dr. Seuss to sell a book, right? That's straight up what it is. Nature of the original, Dr. Seuss, hella creative, so not fair. So not fair under purpose, not fair under nature of the original. If we look at amount used uh, qualitatively, quantitatively, again, not fair at all. It's totally using too much and using the heart of the work. And lastly, market harm. Would someone maybe see this book? Now look at the image of this book and maybe think it's a Dr. Seuss book. The answer is possibly yes. Therefore, it's creating market harm because, again, it's simply exploitative. Okay, we're going to take a little break. We're going to talk about Nirvana 
and talk about Shepherd Fairy and the Obama Hope image, and then we're going to be out for today. <laughs>